And our next speaker is Arkady Prokop, Arkady Prokopov uh, from Spain. He is going to talk about affordable rejuvenation. Dear colleagues, dear gerontologists and sympathizers, first of all, I would like to thank organizers for giving me possibility to present. And as a practicing physician, I will speak about very practical things. You know this picture. This is the projected number of centenarians in the US. And people who will be supposedly centenarians in 2050, now they are around 60. They are baby boomers. And we have a problem with them. <laughs> Though they uh, possess about 80% of wealth, they are not rushing to donate for biogerontological research. Why is this? Maybe they have other idea about health, healthy aging, and maybe they don't need a prolonged lifespan Maybe they, uh, they, they ask for prolonged health span. And they always ask, when do you give us something practical? And uh, quoting Aubrey, we know that the first generation of therapies will be more orientated for um, prevention and uh, treatment of age-related degenerative diseases. So let's follow the roadmap. What do we have at the moment? What is sure, efficient, and what is working? Calorie restriction. It works for mice. It works for apes. The left one is ad libitum fat, and the right one calorie restricted and they are about the same age. Can do this. Also the goal is clear, to die young as late in life as possible. I have a client, he looks a little bit like this and he is 83. And he says, my idea of healthy aging to drop dead being shot by a jealous rival at the age of 99. <laughs> so, uh, and the numbers are growing. There are people who already exercise running and they, certainly they will live longer and healthier. But the majority is still waiting. Because, you know, it's pretty difficult. But, do we have shortcuts? If there are any available shortcuts, to help us overcome calorie restriction problems and exercising. Okay, let's take a look at the. Let me uh, let me show you a short uh, course of uh, exercising physiology. This is a graph of physical training interval training. Five minutes exercise, five minutes rest. Five minutes exercise, five minutes rest, and so on. During exercise heart frequency is rising, and in the rest pause, it sinks. Uh, lung ventilation also, and blood volume also rises and sinks. But oxygen content in the blood and in the muscles drops <coughs> during exercising. It's clear, because mitochondria consume oxygen, and then in the rest pause, it goes back. And the drop of oxygen during very heavy exercise can be down to 90%. I saw, for instance, with marathon, uh, marathon runners, they exercise ex extremely on the treadmill and it can drop till 90. Lower, I never seen. But, now I tell you, this is not uh, physical exercising. It's inhalation of oxygen, reduced air. Oxygen reduced air, by inhalation, of course, your heart should uh, uh, 
heart frequency should increase, and blood volume should increase, and lung ventilation to compensate hypoxia. And in the pause, it goes down. What does it mean? It means that with this relatively simple intervention, we can module, we can imitate, simulate effects of physical training. Let's take a look at the picture. This is the graph of a training protocol of a senior female patient. She is 80 plus. And you see during, this is the hypoxic phase and this is hyperoxic phase. Here she inhales uh, air with about 10% concentration of oxygen and here is about 40%. And during hypoxic phase, of course, oxygen content drops and heart frequency increases. And in hyperoxic uh, pause, it's just the reverse. It goes back to normal. Normally we have about 89%, uh, 98% oxygen saturation in our blood. Please pay attention. Marathon, uh, but marathon training, you can drop it till 90. And here, this lady who never trained physically, her oxygenation drops lower than 80. What does it mean? For mitochondria, it's the most important signal to start to initiate all adaptational processes, all pathways, which result in the, the same results as by physical training. And this lady doesn't move her finger. She is meditating. And all her oxygen-sensitive cells, including neurons, myocardial cells, and hormonal gland cells, they are exercised. This is shortcut number one. Can we make calorie restriction more user-friendly? It is known that the classical calorie restriction can be substituted with short-time intermittent calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, alternative day fasting. And we found out that even simpler option exists, extended morning fast. It means that the uh, first food consumption should be not earlier at as one o'clock, and the last one about seven or eight o'clock. And uh, hypoxic training should be done in this fasting period, in this fasting time. It accelerates the efficiency of both. It's, synergi uh, it's a synergistic option. A combination of modified, uh, what is IHT? Actually, it's intermittent hypoxic training. It's an um, international uh, accepted term, and it, it, um, it describes this intervention. So it's very easy tolerated and provides excellent adherence of patients to the treatment protocol. Okay, what are the results? All oxygen-sensitive cells, cells respond immediately and we see immediate improvement in the balance of neuromediators in the brain. We see very fast improvement in cardiovascular functions. We see capillary growth, wound healing accelerated. We see improvement of blood delivery, improvement, improved iron utilization, or I cannot say that uh, it prevents all the seven, seven or eight reasons, but it modulates favorably all these seven reasons. Details you can find uh, in this publication, I published it in, in 2007, in attempt to explain exceptional longevity of bowhead whales. Mammals that live more than 200 years and they don't have cancer. <coughs> And they have special, uh, they, their way of life combines uh, uh, regularly fasting. They fast six months a year in winter time. And of course, continuous hypoxic training because otherwise they cannot survive. Okay, what mechanisms are involved? 
most of these mechanisms are linked to nitrous oxide production. They are mediated by nitrous oxide. What mechanisms? They are cl typical classical mechanisms which influence regenerative processes and protection of genome. This is enzymes, glutathione peroxidase, superoxid dismutase. These are uh, chaperones as, uh, as SHP17. And these are all typical pathways which result in cardioprotective, vasoprotective, neuroprotective, and anti-stress defense. There are many other pathways. I even cannot cite, I cannot quote literature because there are too, much, too many. Uh, it's a, a big list. To, uh, if, you, if you are interested, you, you will find detailed description in this monograph, clinical applications of intermittent hypoxia. It uh, will be published in the next month. And this monograph, which includes our chapter on the longevity enhancing interventions. And uh, it will be available at the end of 2009. Well, technically, medical applications of IHT, they are uh, summarized in this, in this list. It's a result of biomedical research of several decades and there are thousands of publications in Russian, English, and German. This is the list of typical problems which can be alleviated and sometimes cured with this uh, um, intervention. My own experience corresponds to the clinical studies and uh, observations. In, uh, since 98 till 2006, it was about 102 patients treated, and the cure rate, I would say cure rate up to 70%, uh, uh, excuse me, up to 88%, and the improvement, dramatical improvement and uh, alleviation rate, it's about 70 to 80%. Interesting case you can find in my poster presentation. Technically, how it is done? Uh, these machines produce oxygen-reduced air and uh, oxygen-enriched air. This is a small device for uh, private use and for small practice. And there are machines for professional use. It can uh, serve simultaneously up to five persons. Important. IHT is essentially not a medical intervention. It can be described as a training. Therefore, there are less regulatory problems, if any. Of the other, of the, on the other side, on the other hand, these devices are several months, in several months they will be registered as medical devices. Uh, we started this program about two years ago, and now we uh, deliver this treatment through established providers. We deliver lecture, provide educational seminars, and uh, in, in the last year we opened six centers in Germany and three in Mallorca. Two-thirds of our clients are seniors. And without any advertising, the demand is constantly growing. Again, quoting Aubrey, I think that we are on the way to uh, to test a prototype of a rejuvenative facility which provides affordable rejuvenative treatment. And during this time I learned a lot from my patients and from my experience. And most important lesson was this. People don't care how much you know if they don't know how much you care. Thank you for your attention.